Why didn't I flinch? Because the laws of science differ fundamentally from those of... Interesting guy, man, and uh, you know he believes it. So, Kyrie, the Earth is flat, right? Yeah. 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 So whatever. That's news. That's news. Here we go. <laughs> this is the Truth Frequency Radio Network. We are T F R. Truth Frequency Radio. Broadcasting straight to you from a large spaceship, currently anchored over Raleigh, North Carolina, eagerly awaiting the 2017 International Flat Earth Conference coming this fall. Meanwhile, the peanut gallery is in a spaceship anchored over the Midwest breadbasket. I don't say that very often, the Midwest breadbasket. Nice. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger than fiction. I'm your host, Mark Sargent, the creator of Flat Earth Clues, which propose that all of us are living inside a Truman Show enclosed structure thousands of miles wide. Check it out at enclosedworld.com or just Google Flat Earth Clues. If you can't find it, uh, you're probably distracted by all the eclipse hoopla, which we will be talking about a little bit tonight and in the weeks to come, leading up until August 21st. When America may be cut in half by a giant black laser beam. Just saying. For those of you listening to this on YouTube and you want to hear the show live as it happens, please go to Truth Frequency Radio for the latest schedule. Currently, the show is on Tuesday nights at 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern. And if it is not July 25th, where you are right now, then it is a rerun. And if you call in, uh, you'll go to voicemail, but you're not going to be able to find me live unless it's the following Tuesday. That's another story for another time. Quote of the day from the peanut gallery is, Doubt thou the stars are fire. Doubt that the sun doth move. Doubt truth to be a liar. But never doubt I love. That's from William Shakespeare. We don't get a lot of Shakespeare quotes in this show, but that's a pretty good one. Oh, let's see. Announcements, announcements. Who's got the announcements? I do. Flat Earth Conference. The rumor that new tickets are opening up, that's, uh, they're already happening. So if you're not on the waiting list already, get on it. Sign up for live streaming. And if you're thinking about bringing press to the Flat Earth Conference in North Carolina, uh, don't try to bring three or four people. Two is probably the max you're going to get unless you're CNN. Uh, actually, unless you're Anderson Cooper. Honestly, let's let's be brutally honest about this. And if you want any more information on that, just go to fe2017.com or just type in Flat Earth Conference into YouTube. You will find a whole bunch of promos with all sorts of wonderful information. Subject matter experts, anybody out there, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, engineers. Well, of course, we'd love NASA people. Anyone wants to talk about Flat Earth? Uh, by pro or con, please get a hold of me at msargent23 at comcast.net or call the phone number that I'm going to read off here in just a bit. In fact, we'll, we'll do two phone numbers tonight, but I'm not going to take the phone calls until we uh, get through the announcements. Jeffrey Gru Grupp debate challenge is still in effect. Anybody who wants to debate against the flat earth, you got to have a master's degree in some sort of physical science or higher. Please contact me. Big money challenge also in effect. Same rules apply. You want to prove the globe, big money in it. 
Email Kathy Dunson at perilandra77 at gmail.com. That's P-E-R-E-L-A-N-D-R-A 77 at gmail.com. Also, DITRH is doing a billboard that's going up near the conference center in Raleigh. Go fund me a stranger's guide to Flat Earth Billboard or FE Billboard. It's going to run September, October, and November. It's going to be a printed billboard. We can... We can send people to stand under it with flat earth signs when we are there. And I paused for a second because uh, my good friend Patricia Steer messaged me while I was doing. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I agree with her if she's listening right now. There's also, the, uh, there's going to be a thing coming up in Atlanta on August 5th and 6th. I will be attending. I am not presenting, but I will be attending. It's the Danoon Institute of Biblical Research Please. presents... The summer 2017 conference, this event will be held the weekend of August 5th and 6th, 2017. Total conference price is $25. The debaters, the big flat earth debate is going to be between Zen Garcia and Dr. Stephen Pigeon. And that's going to be at the Holiday Inn Gwinnett Center. So again, I am, I will be there August 5th and 6th, but I will not be presenting. I'm just there to root on Zen and hopefully everything goes well. Also, Rob Skiba is going to be doing a Flat Earth presentation on September 15th through the 17th at Cleveland, Ohio. The website is takeontheworld17.com. Amber Plaster is also going to be there. I don't know if she's going to be singing, but she's on the, the guest list, so I think she will be singing. So hopefully that will go really well. If you guys want more information on that, besides takeontheworld17.com, you can contact Chris Bailey at 440 668 Six three seven three. That's the end of the announcements. Phone number to call in. We're gonna we're gonna start with the direct line, and that one is two one three two three 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 nine nine eight. That is two one three two three 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 nine nine eight. And the backup number, which go forwards through Skype and then back around to the switchboard, but it actually it should be fine. Is seven two zero eight nine seven six one one one. That is seven two zero eight nine seven six one one one. So, that being said, do I have anything else? Let's look in the peanut gallery here real quick. Uh, yes, all hail the queen. Marky Mark and the bunch. So, see your plan soon. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And let me look in the chat room and see what's going on there. And that looks like Zulu One's bedroom. I see a lot of VHS porn sitting around there, some lubricant. Uh, pretty pretty scary place. But that's okay if he wants to leave it on that screen. Oh, that's not his. That's not it. That's some that's somebody completely different, I think. Anyway. Let's do a couple emails while we are waiting for the phone calls. First email is gonna be from Thunderbear Courage. It's called Sorry Forgot to Attach a Document. Please ignore the email I just sent. And he says, hey, you know, the new flat earth proof for me is for gas to be an atmosphere, it must be under pressure. That would mean that there has to be a dome over the earth. Something has to maintain pressure. Absolutely agree with you, Thunder Bear Courage. Uh, that's one of my, my big things when, it, you know, the, the, the infinite plane versus the dome. Probably my biggest thing is, isn't the stars and the sun and the moon, it's the atmosphere. That is, you, a pressurized system, one with a dome, a firmament, whatever you want to call it, makes it way easier to deal with the atmosphere question. Because if it's just an infinite plane, you still got to deal with that whole vacuum question. Is it a vacuum up there? Is it not a vacuum? What are the layers of atmosphere once you get up to a certain point? Is it a bleeding edge? How does the atmosphere stay clung to the ground? Much easier in a pressurized system. So, moving on. Let's look at... This email, it's called, This is a Long Shot. Mark, a guy on a Flat Earth Facebook group was inquiring about satellites, and I mentioned how balloons were used. And then he asked about how they could be tethered in place. Do you think it's possible that balloon satellites could actually be tethered in place with long tether lines, kind of like lines that secure tall towers? I suspect that by now it's not just one balloon like we've been shown, but several balloons that work together as a group. Simple remote control with some robotic arms doesn't seem so far-fetched compared to landing rovers on Mars. I imagine that they can trade places and maybe even service or resupply or be swapped out on location by now. NASA has had 50 years to master balloon technology. After all, 
it's all they can really do. Avoiding shipping lanes and flight paths seems fairly simple. An occasional hurricane might be a problem, but if they are using oil rigs as the base points of attachment, it wouldn't be any problem at all. This isn't high tech. I think it would work and it'll be a lot easier and cheaper than satellites in space. I know this is thinking really outside of the box, but I haven't heard of any other viable way to hold a balloon in place. That's from Mike Horde in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and I, okay, one, I do think there's satellite balloons up there, obviously, because we, we see them crash recently. Some, some really good footage of crashed satellite balloons. And NASA is launching massive payloads, stuff that's upwards of three, four tons. But when it comes to having a tether, you're going to have a problem there, mostly because of the jet stream. And when you get up to a certain altitude, there are some strong, strong winds moving from west to east, especially the United States. I mean, there's currents that that really move. And so it'd be like trying to fly a kite when you know the upper atmosphere is almost moving, if not always, at hurricane speed. Remember that even in the United States, when you're going from east to west, you're running into a 100-mile-an-hour headwind. So it's a nice idea, but uh, I don't think so. All right, first phone call we're going to grab. There's a couple lined up here. This one's from 936 area code. 936 area code. Are you there? Out of Texas, I believe. Uh, yeah, I'm here. Uh, what's going What's going on, man? What's up, uh, Mark? Wow, I can't believe I got I got through. Um, <laughs> yeah, I actually got. I'm in, I'm in Toronto, downtown Toronto. That's where I'm, that's where I live right now. But I have a Texas number because it's cheaper. Oh, that's yeah. cool. That's <laughs> cool. Um, um, uh, yeah. So, um. Uh, I'm in Toronto, and uh, I'm, I'm a professional boxer, actually. Um, got a pretty good following on Instagram. Oh, cool. I'm a 100%, 100% flat earther. I've been preaching that this out, you know, for for about a year and a half. Everybody, you know, I don't get ridiculed as much as I'll fuck you up, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They can't tell me anything. Oh, that's a, so that's a T-shirt right there. That's a T-shirt, flat earth yeah. boxer. <laughs> Fuck yeah, That's man! Awesome. Yeah, yeah, follow me on Instagram if you can. I'm Mario Neck Perez. I'm, I'm I'm big on it. I'm always put, put post stories about how the earth is flat. I always watch your stuff and I and I, and I copy a lot of your stuff and I, and I and I preach it out. I'm right I'm on. Recently, I'm looking into get. I'm recently looking into getting a, a billboard mm-hmm. in Toronto, but that yeah. one's a little expensive, so I might do a GoFundMe. But what I am gonna do and I'm gonna put it out of my own pocket is uh, there's these trucks that they're advertisement trucks, right? Mm-hmm. And, and I don't know if you've been to Toronto, but Toronto is where it's at. This is where the money's at. Toronto's a badass city. You know? Nice. And in, in downtown Toronto, I'm going to get this truck, and it's, I think it's like 1200 bucks for four hours, and it's like these LED screens, huge LED screens, you know, on these on this truck, and it goes around for four hours all around the core of downtown. Nice. And, uh... You know, yeah, cause people got to know about this shit. And I'm also getting a gra- looking for somebody to um, get a wall done for me, some graffiti, because uh, Toronto's big and on graffiti, right? Yeah. Very, uh, a lot of art here. So uh, I'm going to do that too and probably do a live stream uh, when I do that. I've been, so um, anyways, uh, I heard you talk about satellites uh, a while ago, and I saw a video, yep. and you're right, about the balloons and stuff. Oh, yeah. And how they're, they're, how they're suspended by... Uh, by huge by, weather uh, balloons, balloons, yeah. Yeah, and then, yeah, yeah, I mean, first, I, don't... Though, you know, I was like, I, yeah. Go ahead. First, I didn't believe, I'm sorry, sorry, Mark. So first, no, go ahead. first, I didn't believe uh, about the satellites, right? There's nothing up there floating, right? But then, you know, I saw that video about the balloons, and yeah. So it makes perfect sense, right? Um, oh, yeah. Uh, absolutely. I have one more question. One, sure. One more question, uh, Mark. Go ahead. Sorry, I'm just. No, 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 you're okay. Man. You're okay. It's, <laughs> it's groovy. It's totally cool, man. Go on, go on. Um, uh, one more, what, like, I, I'm just waiting to, um, for this shit to come out, man. Cause you know, uh, uh, I, I just recently got here to Toronto. I got signed to a new promoter here in Canada and, and I've got a big name going out for myself now, you know, and, um, and, and a lot of motherfuckers laughed at me at first, right? Sure. Blah, blah, blah. That. And, um, after I started getting a lot more knowledge. And, uh, and and getting more facts down, doing research. I've been researching this shit for about a year and a half, right? Nice. Um, everybody says everybody says I'm stupid and uh, you're just a boxer, but you know what, man? I don't have to work a day in my life, so so I'm not. There you go. Yep, I don't, I, I, I don't I've I'm heard that, that. I don't think I'm that. I don't think I'm that stupid, right? So, um, <laughs> so all so, 
so I train, you know, I train, I fuck people up in the ring. And then after, after I do that, I, you know, I have, I'm vegan too. I have, I have pigs. I live in downtown Toronto, 25th floor. I got two dogs, two pigs. You know, I got that athlete life going and straight flat earth, man. You know, nice, I, man. I, I love, I love, I love what you're doing, man. You're, you're a really intelligent, man. Thank you. And, uh, and keep pumping it out, man. I'll All right. I will. You guys. And, um, Oh yeah, and the question was sorry, sorry. The question okay. was Mark, sorry man. The question was, when do you think this 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 will break through, man? Like, like when will will will, will somebody it's, like in it's got to be start looking at this? It's got to be soon. The mainstream has been teasing us now for the last couple of months, and yeah. uh, you know that I I didn't make it up. I mean, I did a CNN interview from a Walmart parking lot. And the only question is, will they run it? Will HBO run their uh, yeah. run it in their news story? There's, you know, the after the Denver Post thing happened, and ABC talked to ODD Reality, and th- I, there's been all sorts of people out there. So, it the timing's got to be perfect. I know that. So whoever's whoever's running it from their side, it's 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 the it's got to be. Who knows? Maybe they'll tie it to the eclipse. I'm not sure. But uh, yeah. but but I have no doubt that uh, it is going to get really really nuts here over the next couple of months leading up to the conference. Yeah, it's soon, man. I remember a year ago, I, yeah. I was I, I just barely I just barely bumped into it, and I would I would look for flat Earth videos, and and it was hard to find them, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and and now, fuck, my feed just pops up brand new feeds like you know right away, boom, boom. Oh whatever. yeah, yeah. So I, yeah. I'm, I'm just excited, man. I'm ready to ready to prove people wrong. <laughs> right on, anyway, right on. And uh, and I'll while while I while, time, oh don't know no, before before I let you go, real quick quote from the peanut gallery just for you, and then I'll let you go. The quote is: "The same hand that can write a beautiful poem can knock you out with one punch." That's poetic justice, and that was Wayne Kelly that said that. There you go. Oh, nice. I like yeah. that. Anyway, you I have like a good that. night in uh, Toronto, and we will talk again. Okay, man. Yes, sir. Thanks, Mark. Right. Have a good All one. Right. See ya. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you from Toronto, Canada. And you know what? I'm not even, even though I can see the caller ID uh, state, I'm not going to list it off. I'll just ask them where they're calling in from. So I'm, let's pick up uh, 253 area code, shall we? 253 area code. Who are you? Where are you calling from? And, and do I really care? <laughs> Mr. Mark Sargent, this is Daryl D. Model. All right, sir. I had a funny feeling that might be you, because I I, get a lot, I don't get a lot of calls from Tacoma, and I was going, you know, that could be I could that could be D Marble. What's going on, man? Could be, could be. Oh, just hanging out in the back of the van, man. Um, there was a situation online. There was a radio show on the East Coast. Uh, they were uh, kind of doing a hit piece on um flat Earth, so. I uh, contacted Dredd over at You Being Exposed, uh, Infinite Plane Society, got there, you know, in, in their chat and got people calling them in to back us up. So, yeah, the Flat Earth Offensive is on the move. Nice. <laughs> nice. That's excellent. That's fantastic. I'm, uh, I, as you know, you're, are you, did I, I, I did a promo for Charlotte, North Carolina. Was that rumor true that you're going to be at that, at that meetup? Yeah, I will be there. Right on. Right on. Yeah. That's cool. The uh, because uh, somebody messaged me, you probably saw it, and, and they said, Oh, yeah, can you do a promo? D Marble's gonna be there. I'm going, Really? Because I, I knew that you flew quite quite often, and I was like, Oh, okay, he's probably going over there for work and just gonna do a whatever reason you're there. And I was invited to it, I was going, Man, you're doing it literally the same day I'm gonna be in Atlanta doing watching a flat earth debate between Zen Garcia and Dr. Stephen Pigeon. So it's cool though that oh. we're you know that all these things are happening simultaneously. Mm-hmm. This is good times, man. I'm I'm so pumped up about what's going on right now. And like the last caller said, the boxer out, out in uh, Canada, it, yeah. it, it's it's going to be soon. It's it's going to happen soon because yeah. things are just getting too nutty. And okay. uh, the way that you guys been talking about, like it, like it's uh, what what, what do you call it? Like a, a runaway truck that's on fire or something? <laughs> no, <laughs> what yeah, do you yeah, 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 yeah. Truck, yeah, runaway truck full of explosives on fire. <laughs> Heck yeah. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. And it's always so We're much because like all this stuff is happening simultaneously. You're not going to be able to stop it. <laughs> I know. I'm like, are we even going to make it to the conference? Good exactly. Lord. I'm exactly. A, hey, man. Way, so, 
Oh, go ahead. No, yeah. go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, 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 no, no, no. I was going to ask you, um, man, I'm thinking that the eclipse is going to be a big day for flat earth. I, I, I got a feeling. I was just, just going to ask you about that. Can you still hear me? Holy crap. Yes. Yeah, no, literally, I was Hello? just, I, was, I, okay. I can hear, can you hear me? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Yeah, I was just going to ask you about that because you're down in Tacoma and the I was just looking at the eclipse thing because one of the documentary teams was thinking about filming it in Salem. You know, you're, you're down in Tacoma and and I priced out the, you know, I tried to, you know, I was going, OK, how bad is it to try to get to Salem, even though, you know, we're up here in Seattle, Tacoma. There are no hotel rooms right. in Salem, Oregon. Literally, you cannot yeah, get them. And there's no flights into Salem because it's the first city, the first major city it's going to get hit by this thing. And so yeah. the media, the media has booked the thing solid. Even Portland is, and I'm, I'm telling you this in advance in case you try to book this thing out. Portland, there you can still get flights. Not that you would, because you just drive, but because uh, you were just there. But hotel rooms there, even even mid level hotel rooms are are going like five hundred dollars a night down if you can find them Good just in Lord. Portland. I know, and that's because the I didn't realize the eclipse thing was really going to be that big a deal, but it is. And absolutely, I think it's a big deal for Flat Earth because it draws so much attention to the moon, which is, you know, it plays such a prominent part in our models. So, yeah, I, you should go down. Definitely should. You should drive down because all you have to do, if you've looked at the map, you, you, even in Tacoma, you're already in the 90 something percentile coverage. All you have to do is get south of Portland by, I think, like 30 miles and you're in the 100 percent zone. So, right. Right. This is going to be awesome. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely planning on uh, going down there and, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to have to call, call in to work that day, you know, take the van down. I got a few people who have actually offered me uh, a little place to crash, you know, if right. I need it. So nice. uh, well, you should, you should take time. them up on it. Cause there's nowhere to freaking stay down there. I mean, for whatever, and it's because of the media, because they don't want to wait until it goes through, you know, Idaho and St. Louis and all the way down to South Carolina. You know, they'd rather uh, track it then and then get it up online as soon as they could. So that's really cool. I hope you do. I hope you do something fun. I'm, I'm, I will probably be there if this guy calls me, but I'll probably have to meet him. I'm going to have him flying to Seattle. I'm going to drive down myself if that's so if that happens, we'll have to we'll have to talk, maybe maybe meet up somewhere down there. That'd be cool. That'd be the coolest. Yeah, absolutely, man. I'm looking forward to it. I, I, you know, I was uh, listening to the show the last few weeks, and I'm like, okay, I keep missing it, and I'll catch catch the uh, replay the very next day, and you say, well, if you're listening to this on Wednesday, then you've missed it. You're not calling live. I'm like, God dang it. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, I, I, so I set, an alarm. I, I set an alarm on my phone. I'm like, okay, it says, 655, Bark Sergeant in Strange World. And I'm like, okay, so I'm online trying to talk to people in ITS's chat and I'm go to your page. I'm like, wait, what's the channel? Oh, well, what's the what's the phone number? So, yeah, man. You know, I'm, I'm glad everything's working out. It's, it's fun. So I'm having a good time so good. with this. I, I'm, I'm giving you a quick heads up because I, I definitely want you to be there. If it, because I, I haven't done a Seattle meetup yet because HBO want, wanted to be there for it. It, but they haven't confirmed anything yet. So if and when they call, it'll be fairly short notice, like you know, less than two weeks notice. But I, I will try to do a Seattle meetup because it's going to be filmed if if that happens. So it'd be great to have you there. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd love it. I mean, and I've been listening to you know to you and Patricia every every week, and nice. you know, staying up to date on as much as I can. So yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm going to be there. And uh, you said something about, you know, maybe throwing a meetup, you know, a little, yep. putting a little something together. Yep. I'm, I'm going to be there. I'm definitely going to be there. I'm, <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm the, all the, about the, the, fam the famous guy that took a spirit level on the plane and didn't get tackled by Homeland Security. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah, just, just, you know, smuggled it in the bag. It, you know, it's all good. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can take the cockpit with a with a spirit level. I just don't think you can do it, to be honest. Yeah, you know, and and I get the craziest uh, rebuttals with those things. You know, people are telling me, well, the level wasn't long enough. And I was thinking earlier that actually a small, the the short spirit level that's about eight nine inches, the one that I had, that would actually register any uh, variation uh, in, in you know decline yeah. or whatever you know, better than a longer spirit level. And I actually went to Lowe's to check that, you know, because I hang out at Lowe's all the time. 
So, you know, I went to check it, and I'm like, wait a minute. The smaller level only made sense, so I might have to make another rebuttal video for that, for anybody that said something like that. But. Definitely. Definitely you should. Um, we're, uh, like we're coming up on the break here in, in just another 60 seconds or so. Do you have any shout-outs you want to give? Any special little announcements on your side? Oh, no. no i got not a whole lot going on. just want to give a shout-out to the Flat Earth community. Uh, Flat Earth Defense is in full effect. Uh, feeling good about going on with the community um you know ips dread over there you've been exposed we're just having a good time i think 27 is going to be the breakthrough year for sure for flat earth yeah. no doubt about it, it. it it's we're yeah it's getting too too crazy too fast and uh again Absolutely. who who knows who knows what the eclipse thing i'm excited and i i hope i uh, hope hope the good things come from it oh yes oh, i saw your video about that earlier today okay but i gotta hop off okay man <laughs> hey you have a good one and he's gone. Wait. Oh, I muted him. Did he hang up? I can't tell. Anyway, is everybody still there? Every, I'm just clicking through the stuff. Oh, by the way, 626 area code. You might want to try the backup number. Uh, and I'm going to grab Pennsylvania here real quick before the break. Oh, well, 215 anyway. 215, are you there? We're going to we're gonna keep you here through the break. You Okay. That's cool. Yep. Hey, it's a uh, it's a uh, space is fake from Boston. Fl uh, flat Earth Killing Libido. Oh, perfect, perfect, perfect. I'm gonna mute you for a second. Um, make a quick little announcement, then we'll pick you up after the okay, break. Cool. Okay. Okay. All right. With that, the phone number. There's two phone numbers to call in. The the one from the video now is two one three two three 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 nine nine eight. That's the faster one. But if you want to call the old phone number, it is 720-897-6111. And you guys can call that number anytime. The 213-233-3998, that is the, uh, the, the straight-up show number. The 720-897-6111 goes straight into my machine. So with that, we are going to go to break here. And when we come back, we're going to be talking with Boston. Hello, Colby. This is the Stay tuned. from Venn speaking. Call them all friends. This is Truth Frequency Radio. No hate, no hype, no fear. Real people, real radio. Welcome back to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger than fiction. We're taking calls tonight, and the phone number is 213-233-3998. That's 213-233-3998. Or you can call the old number, 720-897-6111. And if you don't know the number, after I read them off, just look up Strange World trailers on my channel. I've got it posted a few times. Anyway, while we were on break, we grabbed... This fine gentleman from Boston. We're going to unmute him. Boston, are you there? Hey, -o. <laughs> what's going on, man? <laughs> How we doing? Good. Hey, Good. Uh, so calling all, calling, calling all flat earthers from New England. Calling all flat earthers from New England. Attention, attention. Uh, you need to come to the next meetup. Uh, just come on, you guys. Just come, come. Already been growing. The second one was awesome. Uh, we did it at Castle Island, and uh, you know, so that's like a peninsula if you look it up on the Google. And uh, there's the airport right there, and a ship shipping center. And um, we just released our video, FE New England, FE New England on YouTube, and mm -hmm. uh, we have the uh, we the highlights video. And it's like uh, 52 minutes. I just watched the whole thing. Came out awesome. Jibby Jedi uh, did the editing. Um, nice. We had two P900s there. 
Uh, we had signs all over the place, and we we turned hundreds of heads, hundreds of heads just staring at the signs as they walked by, and then nice. at least thirty to forty people who stopped and asked questions. So it was is freaking. Ah oh, man, I'm I am beyond words right now. You know, uh, it's just it's been a it's been a long journey, and here we are. You know. Yeah, yeah, and and I'm very excited for you guys. I mean, the amount of meetups that have been happening around the United States, and heck, I mean, I just was that this morning that I did the one from from Dubai, or was it last night? I mean, Dubai, you know, London. Oh, I'm, really? I'm waiting. Oh yeah, yeah. There's one going to be in Dubai in uh, the end of next month. So very excited about that. Um, unless, awesome. the, unless the eclipse. Yeah, you know, we're doing our next one um, early mid August. We're going to do the next one. We're not sure yet when we're going to do a, a, a hangout on our channel on Friday, mm-hmm. uh, Friday or Saturday night, and then uh, we're going to decide the exact date again. We're trying to do these more and more often because there's been a lot of people contacting us through our YouTube and through our email. Who Excellent. actually, I we have a kind of a big a big announcement. Uh, the Boston Globe has contacted us. I, not, that does uh, not surprise me. That's fantastic, guys. Yeah. Yeah, they mentioned right. the Denver the Denver Post article. Yep. And um yeah, they want they want to come to the next meetup. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The the Denver and, Post and, did yeah, more and, more for us than many of the other mainstream things because they they put it on their front page. And 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 newspapers yeah. they they track each other. It's like what's the lead story? And that's how the the Houston Chronicle in, yeah, inter- interviewed Patricia. They're like, "What yeah, Denver I'm, run?" I'm a, Go ahead. I'm beyond words right now. I'm beyond words. That's I, fantastic. I, 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 like I, I, I'm just I've been a I've been a I've been a follower. You know what I mean? I've been a consumer of Flat Earth. You know, mm-hmm. I've been a customer. You know yep. what I'm saying? So it's like to to just all I did was put the word out. I said, "Hey, New England, stop being dumb. Let's meet up." You know, that's all I did. And then yep. you posted something about it, and then. Here we all are, and they're, they're, the first meetup was five people. Next, today, last meetup on Saturday, ten people uh, or more, actually. And then, like, yeah. it, it was it was like a kiosk. It was like a damn mall kiosk. We had nice. our signs. I had my laptop out. We had globes with Research Flat Earth on them. We had maps. We had pamphlets. We had uh, uh, we had uh, flyers to hand out with YouTube channels on them. Uh, and we got a ton of people to stop and talk and, uh, we have footage of it all. So if you guys want to go to our channel and check it out, what, uh, FE New England and, awesome. uh, yeah, it's just, you, you, you guys keep me going. You know, I've been, I've been through a lot of personal stuff going on in my life, you know, uh, you know, with, uh, lady, lady stuff and then, uh, um, sure. pet stuff. And, you know, I, it's, uh, it's been tough lately, but I've been still going to work, doing my slave job, you know, doing my thing. Yep. Uh, yep. but, uh, you know, we're working on our freedom. You know, we're that's what we're doing. We're working right on. on our freedom, and uh, we need to never, never stop fighting for it because absolutely. It's all there is. If electricity was free, if electricity was free, we'd all be free. That's the bigger conspiracy. That's the only conspiracy bigger than flat Earth. If, if electricity, <laughs> electricity was free, yeah. If electricity yeah. was free, like it should have been a hundred years ago, like it should, it's like about how would we'd have free fucking buildings, free food, free travel free everything if electricity was free everything's free so that's mm-hmm. that's the bigger conspiracy no, really no, no. yeah the, the, the tesla thing and by the way i'm i'm really happy that that boston's doing meetups on the east coast i'm a little yeah. surprised you i mean it's not probably not surprising to you that new england would do a meetup before new york i why why have i not done a oh a really promo? yeah new york has well, not done one. you know new york they have the crazies they have the crazies who do the jesus thing on the sidewalks and all that stuff but like it's not like an organized crazy like uh, we are. We're oh like, God. you know. But you know, you know, the, what I mean? you know, you know what I'm saying? yeah, I do. You know, the one that surprised me more than any of them, though, is how Los Angeles has not done it yet. Los Angeles is as fruit loopy as it gets. I what? Mean, that's, really? They nope. haven't. Nope. Well, they're kind of they're kind of Floridited <laughs> out over there. That I mean, must you know, be it. The, you know. I'm. I'm floored that I have not nobody (laughs) sent me a thing. I mean, it'd take two seconds, for God's sakes. You know, just somebody meet up at a TGI Fridays. It doesn't take much. I mean, for God's sakes, Phoenix Phoenix has done three meetups, and they they did it at a mall food court. That's how easy it is to do. Yeah, see, that's why I'm choosing uh, for us is public parks because, you know, especially if you're on the ocean, public parks are free. You can do yep. experiments all day. We have all over our video is footage of long distance shots to like Hingham 
to like, you know, all the, all these places and, and boats and, and planes and it's awesome. Great yeah. footage. And, uh, you guys should all check it out. And, uh, but I'll, I'll put up the line. Thanks for letting okay. me do my spiel. And, right, uh, yeah, check out our channel guys. And, uh, I'll talk to you soon, Mark. And all you right. guys have a good one. Stay flat. Okay. Have a good one, man. All right. Bye. 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 Yep. Okay. Uh, this quote, uh, from the peanut gallery, I don't think is for the new England gentleman that just talked to me. I think it's for somebody else that may be calling in, maybe the 626 area code. Uh, meanwhile, though, we have Denver, Colorado, I think, 720. We'll find out, though. Let's get a hold of them, shall we? 720, you're on the line right now. Where are you calling from? Hey, Mark Sardin. This is uh, Mitt and Amso. I'm actually in Denver, Colorado. Oh, you are in Denver. You are correct. Excellent. Oh, cool. What, yes. uh, what, what's going on out there? Uh, nothing much. Uh, actually, the Earth is a sphere, and this is Tim Osmond. Hey, do not ever try to get me off your show, dude. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, and I... It, oh, see? I, I don't know what happened. There was a technical difficulty there. Anyway, phone number to call in is 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111. Operators are standing by, and by that I mean me. So if you're going to call in, be nice, because remember, no matter where you go, there you are. Peanut Gallery says what? Peanut Gallery retracted those messages because he's saving them for somebody else. Another phone call. Coming in from, nope, yep, 512 area code. Let's find this one. Oh, I know who this is. 512. Yeah, it's 512. This is Chip uh, San Marcos, Texas. Hey, how's my how's my man Chip doing? I'm uh, doing well. Doing well. Um, regarding the the eclipse, I remember my dad was an uh, amateur astronomer himself, and so we went to eclipses quite a bit. Uh, and we even, if you are old enough to remember the Carly Simon song, "You're So Vain," you blew your lid up to Nova Scotia to see the total eclipse of the sun. We were there for that one. Um, nice. And, you know, Dad taught us how to make the little pinhole thing where you would project the sun down, you know, so, you know, because obviously, you know, all you uh, people who want to observe the eclipse, I think every eclipse somewhere, a couple people actually go blind or something from staring at the thing after the sun comes yeah. back. Down. I mean, you can look at it fully eclipsed, but, it, you know, not recommended. But the idea was he actually went out and bought welder's glass, right? Yeah. And he, you know, taped it into a cardboard thing, so you can actually go ahead and put it up and look straight through it, which leads me to believe now, when I've been researching on the electrical aspect, that, well, that's the same brightness as a, as a welding arc, so who's to say the sun isn't some sort of electrical arc? Hmm. I like that. Right? Yeah, that's good. Well, I go. remember, I remember. by the way, and you're absolutely right about welder's glass, because I read a thing that NASA is, I don't know if they're selling them or if they're endorsing them, but they were going to uh, be releasing special eclipse glasses. And I'm thinking, geez, uh, that's, that's got to be like welder's goggles, because I wore a, a welder's helmet with sunglasses underneath it when I was doing the whole Nibiru thing back in 2012. <laughs> You know, because, you know, he kept seeing pictures and I'm looking and they're going, there's something next to the sun, you know. And so, yeah, I bought, bought a full blown welder's helmet. I'm looking at it. I'm looking. I'm going, I don't see anything. So I eventually gave the welder helmet away. And then now I, th I read that it's like, oh, yeah, by the way, the eclipse is literally going to cut the, uh, the United States in half with its path. I bet the path is almost <laughs> perfect. Seriously. I mean, it's well, going. You know, that... Go ahead. Well, I was just saying, I, I did watch the video that, that you had posted, um, and which all the animations have the Earth spinning in the wrong direction. Every single and, one of them. And not just you know? in the wrong it, direction. If you watch, in fact, I'm gonna, I've got a new video that I, I downloaded. It's from, it's from NASA, and they're showing one of their animations at the end where. And I don't know how they get it wrong. I mean, I know there's a 50-50 chance because most people, if you don't know three-dimensional modeling, you're going to get it wrong. It's like, well, does it go clockwise or counterclockwise? Oh, just spin a direction. Who cares? No one's going to notice, right? And of course we do. <laughs> but there was, a, there was one that NASA released where, where the moon was going. They were showing the moon tracking around the Earth, and the Earth was hardly rotating. I'm going, how does everybody miss this? It's like every rotation, every time the moon circles the Earth, the Earth rotates 27 and change times. That's fast. Yes. You, I mean, that's yes. ying, 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 ying. 
And so that animation's got to be a lot faster. And I'm watching, I'm going, how do they not get this? This is a NASA video. How are they not getting this? And, uh, yeah. and, uh, and, and it, once you believe something, once you believe something blindly enough, your right. brain is actually not on calculate. It's just observing it, but it's not necessarily, you know, rationalizing. It's not, you know, that's the whole point about dumbing down people in education. You know, we don't want these people to be any threat to our little game. Um, right. I like what uh, Boston said about organized crazy classic. That is utterly classic. You know, we're not normal street value Jesus crazy, right? We're organized crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, and, I mean um, seriously, the, the two biggest cities in the country, and they're not doing meetups yet. How how does that happen exactly? I'm, I'm trying to right, figure that out. Speaking of which, um, if we can get, you know, Central Tech, we've got a great forum, so a single person get on here and speak, and you're speaking to a, a vast audience of flat earthers. Um, if there's anybody in Central Texas who wants to meet up, uh, Leotl at gmail.com. If it looks like there's enough interest to generate that, we could do Austin, maybe San Marcos. However, it is currently 104 every day here, so we might want to push it to the fall or something like that, Oof. unless we have a nice indoor venue or something like that. But yeah. the, the idea is to encourage everybody. If you've got a city somewhere, if, if there's not a flat earth meetup going there, the brave, you know, if you're a brave flat earther, if you're willing to go ahead and, and walk the walk, talk, talk, then go out there and do it. Um, right. And let me right just one thing I had a thought of is, is remember, you know, everybody goes and um, the, the real crazies camp out for Star Wars, you know, for weeks ahead of time when the new movie comes out or the people who, and before Christmas or Thanksgiving or whatever, Black Friday, you know, they're all camped out. Well, the thing about those is, is that at some critical point in that in that line, the line just gets long enough to where everybody realizes, oh, crap, if I don't get in line now, I'm going to be at the end. Right. And that's one of the flat earth phenomena is that we're all camped out in front of the flat earth and the line, you know, people are trickling in little by little and some got lawn chairs and tents, but at yeah. some point people are going to look and go, that line's getting too big. I better get in it now. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The, that's, it's that's the, the it's the dancing, the dancing guy at that organ music festival right, thing right. where that's people, it's like video. all of a sudden, all of a sudden, if it, once it turns, once you get that weird tipping point, then people want to be part of it. And again, once you get the once you get the kids, then it's over. And I've been watching younger and younger people get involved in this thing. Honestly, I it, right, people right. They, they can criticize me all they want, but like, look, if this thing spreads around a, a high school lunchroom it, or junior high lunchroom, it's over. You know, it, it's like, right. oh, dude, yeah, see, this is really crazy. And and even even if most of them laugh, a lot of them won't. It's uh, it'll be cool. Well, remember so. when we were kids. We didn't tell our parents anything. There's there's a little threshold between kids and adults, and the, the whole cell phone thing. I was talking with a friend of mine about. He was like, "Oh, you know, these kids can hack all kinds of things, and we have no idea." Now, granted, you're a computer guy, so you're gonna know quite a bit more about that. But there's probably a level of stuff that doesn't make it past that a certain age of kids. You know, they keep that all together, maybe until they go up to college and things get different like that. But yeah, you had the what was a seven year old girl filmed by her nine year old brother, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, it's um, ridiculous. Her parents weren't even in the room. Man, I'm going. I just... And and I'm getting crap for it. I'm going, look, I had nothing to do with this. They filmed this themselves. And any any kid that makes a flat earth video, I'm putting it up. I'm mirroring it. I, I do not care what well, they it, say. It's like that's the audience that eventually has to get on board. And I've I've got no no problem with it at all. It inspires free thinking and individualism. Yeah, yep. and you know, and that's once you get, you know, lit on that fuse, you're Pretty much, there's no way back. You know the old, you know the, the old saying: once you go flat, you you don't go back. You like I said, exactly. there's a just one guy. What Joe Rogan, the only one? Oh yeah, yeah, Joe Rogan, the only conspiracy guy that that left conspiracies. The only guy I've ever even heard of. Only guy. Yeah. So. Hey, we'll tell you what. I look at the clock, and you got enough time to take two or three more people. So okay. I'm going to sign off and shout out once again to the Flat Earthers Public Closet, just coming into it, the veterans, the the leaders, everybody out there. You know, it's inevitable now. Yeah. Yep. Uh, absolutely. All right. You have All right, man. And, oh, yeah. By the, by the way, thank you, by the way, for the new tracks. And uh, I will get them up as soon as I can. I've just been trying to find a place for them. Hey, you know, I just, I didn't want to be the only guy sending tracks to. I was like, you know, I didn't want to monopolize. Just like, oh, I, I want to encourage people. I love you, know, your stuff. You, you know, you know what I like. And so that's perfect. Don't, don't worry about it. Well, I, I, the movies. Yeah. You know, we I like watch the, all the same movies. Like, Probably exactly. Why that is, so. so yeah, we're we're on the same page when it comes to some of this stuff. So all right, Mark, take some more calls and keep at it, buddy. Okay, have a good one. Yep. All right. Uh, phone number to call in is seven two zero eight nine seven six one 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 or two one three two three 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 nine nine eight, which will go straight into the station. 
But let's pick up 616, I think. 616, area code. You are on live with Strange World. Where are you? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. 616 left. They left me. Oh, man. They were on hold for too long. You know, if you call, by the way, with a new system and you're on hold, you're just going to be listening to the show. So thank you for that. And thank you, by the way, Zulu1 for organizing the chat room on the side. I'm seeing everybody over there. Larry and Carl and Dave and, geez, I'm sounding like Patricia when I'm doing this. And Brian Burton and Chris Truthseeker and whoever else. And, oh, and, of course, Candy, otherwise known as I Spy, NASA Lies, and Vincent P. And all those fun people. And, and yes, you, Brian Burton. Well, whatever. Okay. <laughs> phone number to call. I'm sorry. I've got too many windows open here. Phone number to call in. The, the main line is 213-233-3998. That is 213-233-3998 or 720-897-6111. And don't be shy because, as you know, I don't really yell at people. Don't be mean, though, because karma is a real thing. I, I can't stress that enough. It's it's real. In fact, if you have any doubts, I had fun watching this some of that today when I was waiting for some videos to compile. I actually was typing in uh, karma justice into YouTube. It's amazing. You want to see instant karma? There's there's some fun examples. Now, granted, it's usually people that are uh, either driving or they're tied to they're, it's some people with their cell phones. But there's a lot of driving ones. So here we go. Let's read an email. Oh, we're waiting for a call, and I'm trying to organize this. I'm going to keep that screen over there so I don't miss anything. Unfortunately, with the new system, I don't get a little beep in my ear if I don't have it up in front of me. So let's do this one. And... This email is called, one second. Mark, can you help? Storms on Flat Earth Model. Hi, Mark. Hope all is well. I've been enjoying your stuff on YouTube and finally finished Flat Earth Clues, the book, recently. I want some help and not sure if you or anyone you know might have something on storms and hurricanes and how they are no, and I read this verbatim, guys, how, how they are no about and predicted on a flat earth model. I have a friend that has not looked at much evidence of the flat earth but has come up with the following text messages. I hope you realize, this is from her friend, I hope you realize that storm systems and hurricane season in general and our ability to forecast them is completely contrary to your flat earth philosophy. The base logic for the formation of hurricanes and cyclical nature of storms is prefaced on globe-based assumptions, hence their ability to predict with relative accuracy storm paths. In the Flat Earth model, they would not be able to predict it. They would be, there would be no equatorial phenomena to base it on. I'm just saying that without the equatorial globe-based logic, the storm trackers would be wrong. And then she says, or he says, I want to try and answer, but I have never heard about storm trackers and weather prediction as globe-based assumptions, only that they will make it only work on a globe, which he sort of says because it won't work on a flat Earth model. Can you help shed a little light on the subject? I appreciate if you are able to point me in the right direction. Thanks much, Farley. Okay, so I'm going to put this in my answer pile. But the answer I would give is take a look and Rob Skiba did the best videos on this where he took the weather systems. And this is not secret information. You can, in fact, the peanut gallery chimed in on this as well. Peanut gallery says, when have the weather people been right? Now, that's funny, depending on where you live. Uh, in fact, in the Northwest, we're constantly, it's either scattered shower, partly sunny or partly cloudy, which is a cop out in my opinion. But anyway, Rob Skiba did some great videos where, and again, not secret information, you can take any of the world's weather patterns and turn them into a map projection. One is the AE map. And whoever's calling in, I think that's, I think that's Wes. Wes, use the, use the other number, 213-233-3998. Use that number, Wes, if you get a chance. That's the main number. I know you're calling from prison, but please try to use the main number because I think when you're going through the secondary number, it just bounces into nowhere land. So anyway, check out Rob Skiba's video when you get a chance. Hopefully you're listening to this. If not, I will, I will email that person and say, look at Rob Skiba's work on weather on the flat earth system. It works far more efficiently and it looks cooler too. Everything just runs in a big circle. It's, it's, it's very, it's elegant. It's way more elegant on a, uh, just a flat map on a flat circular map rather than a sphere. Sorry, it is. There's a lot of things that are more elegant. I don't know why people have such a hard time 
with a flat map, but only an enclosed flat map. I, I can't speak for a, because again, weather system would be tough to do if there wasn't some sort of dome or firmament. Somebody keeps trying. Yeah, he'll get through eventually. This next email is called Flat Earth Clues Director's Cut Video. Hi, oh, here's a phone call coming in from a couple bouncing around. This one's from North Dakota. Let's pick it up, I think. 701 area code. You're on live with Strange World yeah. right now. What's going on? Yeah, hi, Mark. Hey. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Um, <laughs> this is Sheila, your, your truck driver from Washington State. Hey, I got a North Dakota line because we, had a, we lived out there, and I had my cell phone still with that number. But um, I called a couple weeks, few weeks ago. I was in Emerson. Oh, I think it was July 4th. Anyway, um, I was going to send you a video about that North Pole Whirlpool. I haven't uh-huh. done it yet, so I apologize, but I'm going okay. to. Okay. And, um, but um, um, I don't know, have you, I have a question for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, with all the talk about the eclipse and everything, have you seen Rob Skiba's, uh or listened to his um, July 19th uh, show um, airing? On Truth Frequency Radio? No, because that, I mean, that's, that's what, a, barely a week ago? So, no, yeah. I am not, not, okay. I have not that, there's, I'm not that caught up yet. I'm still reading emails from, and, Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Well, he, he had on some people uh, as guest speakers, and there was some mind blowing information, uh, especially one who's doing experiments with his brother, who's a commercial airline, uh, air, commercial air, pilot, and um, they're using a app that I guess surveyors use um, for triangulation on objects. Mm-hmm. Well, they started to do these experiments to take shots at the moon um, and doing a triangulation from, you know, two points and doing the simple math to see how far, because what he was trying to show was either the moon was either a few thousand miles up on the flat Earth model or the 239,000, right? That's okay. what NASA says or science says. Well, uh, their math came up to be totally different than what they expected. In fact, very radical. And I think it would be worthwhile for you to listen to it because what they came up with is like more like two to 300 miles away. Wow. And they kept doing this over and over and over again. And so, and Rob Pisa, I guess, is going to be trying to um, get some people on the cliff day to um, take sh- photos of the moon with this app and see if they come up with the same type of uh, information because if it's only two to 300 miles away, that just blows everything out of the water for um, science, not even flat earth, but it's just science, period. You know? Wow! So, all right, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll check it out if I get if I it won't be hard for me to do it because I've got a password into uh, the TFR network, but absolutely check it out. That sounds fantastic. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the other one that was very interesting was Ben Garcia's latest uh, airing too. That was just like uh, Thursday, mm-hmm. and they he had on some speakers there that were doing um, models. Um, computerized models of the electromagnetic universe and so doing the firmament and showing how the firmament is is, very, is more like a magnetic layer mm-hmm. and that the one guy was saying the sun isn't really what we're thinking it's more like a refraction or, or you know or like a lens and wow. I didn't cry I have to listen to that one again because okay. that just kind of blew my mind too but yeah those are two that I thought you I'm very interested. Thank you, thank you. And perfect timing because we're going to break here in just a few seconds. Any shout outs you want to give? Um, no, just you know, hey, everybody out there, flat earth is just, you know, the way to go. And I <laughs> like you said, once you go flat, you don't come back. Right so on. Keep it hey, up. You have, a, yeah. you have a good night, okay? Thanks. Okay, you too. Bye bye. You are now tuned into the Truth Frequency. We are TFR. TFR. Truth Frequency Radio. Oh, 
Welcome back to Strange World, part three of four. And the phone numbers to call in because I a couple of people that were texting me recently. And even though I don't reply to texts ever, I don't care for any reason, I don't care if you're on fire. I will, however, read off the phone number real quick, which is 213-233-3998. That is 213-233-3998, not 2998, Uber driver. The other one is 720-897-6111, 720-897-6111. All right. Well, during the break, we picked up one from, I don't know where this person's from, but it's 254 area code, so let's grab them. 254 area code, are you there? I'm here. What's going on? Well, I called to ask you a question. <laughs> the other day... Yeah. I know I never call to ask a question, do I? That is right. <laughs> I always call the bullshit. <laughs> Sorry. That's my it. bad. That's it. Uh, uh. <laughs> what do you got? Anyway, what do you got? Okay. I was looking at the sunset and there was a big, pretty one of those big bubbly clouds and the sun was making beautiful rays coming up straight off of it, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And there was no other clouds in the sky except in the sunset. And then I turned around and I was looking the other way and in the east sky, and I've got, I videotaped this, but it probably needs to be put in Photoshop and filtered to, to low lots so you can really see the range. But in the east sky was a perfect replica of the sunset. Really? Yeah. Wow. I mean, the rays came off the clouds, and they, and I, I don't do drugs, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, I wasn't accusing you. It's not like, really, I mean, do you hear me do that a lot to a lot of people? It's like, put the crack pipe down. <laughs> I'm just wanting to clear that right up. Right. I don't do drugs. And, okay, so the rays are coming off in the usual direction, you know, they're coming away from the sun, mm -hmm. and then as they get into the top of the sky, you know, where they get real broad, then they start narrowing and, and went back down to the east horizon, mm -hmm. and it was like a perfect re replica. Have you ever seen this? I've never seen this I, in my life. I actually released a video on this uh, late last year, I think. Somebody had filmed it, and I can't remember what state they were they were they were in but it wasn't it wasn't everywhere it wasn't all over the world at the same time i think there i i, I still firmly believe that there's instancing and phasing in, involved when it comes to the display system and i think certain regions in fact oh what was the uh, what was that event so long ago the uh, the three miracles or the the three prophecies the fatima event the day of the sun if i'm not mistaken someone on the peanut gallery is going to have to look up that for me but the fatima event where Thousands of people on the ground, but only in this one specific area, saw the sun dance around the sky, you know, for no apparent reason. And there was only, one, but really? there was only one sun in the sky. So yeah, I, I absolutely believe you. Wouldn't wouldn't surprise me in the slightest. I mean, I had witnesses with me, you know, <laughs> it wasn't just me that seen it, and I was like, "Can you explain that?" And my husband was like, "No," and I'm in Texas, you know. Well, so yeah, yeah. I again, I'm sure a lot of people seen it is what we do with display systems now, especially in simulations. And by the way, when I say simulations, I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not dismissing God when I say that. I'm saying, look, God's a programmer. At the very least, he's a programmer, and he's probably programmed stuff a little more advanced than us. It's something 
program we cannot even understand what exactly. he has put up in the sky. Uh, it, there you go. I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad you said that because well, I mean, people say lots of well, people you know, simulation you're... and say the government's doing this or that. No. Good Lord, no. I'm saying that as our tools advance, we give those that credit to whoever created this place. You know, back in the day, God, you know, back in the day, God only apparently worked with chisels and hammers. You know, they were divine chisels and hammers. And then as we got machines, like, oh, God's got <laughs> machines. And now then we got computers. Oh, God's got computers. It's like, look, assume that whatever we've oh. got is just antiquated compared to what the people that built this place. And I'm not saying necessarily it's, it's absolutely divine that, because, you know what I mean? When, when you just said that about tools and being divine and stuff, I just had to think of this movie. And I know you're a movie buff. I thought of Frailty. Have you ever seen that movie? Movie? With, uh, uh-huh. With Matthew McConaughey. Uh, yes. He keeps getting sent these like, tools, like an axe and a like a bar. Now I'm going to have to look it up again. I, I think I, 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 or something. I may have only watched it once. Are you sure it's Matthew McConaughey? It's a weird though? movie. Oh yeah. He's a sheriff. All right. All right. I'll check it out. <laughs> I'll check it cool out. Movie, I don't, I don't think it made that much of an impression. Without him being a kid, Bill Pullman is his dad. And I generally don't like Bill Pullman. Oh no, I like Bill Pullman. Is that the guy in Twister? Oh, now I'm going to have to look it up. Hang on. No, no, you're thinking of Bill Paxton. Yeah, Bill Paxton. Oh, 2001. He's, oh. he's yeah. his dad. Anyway. Yeah, 2001. Tools. God sent him tools. And now I'm going to have to look that one up because in 2001, I was gaming my butt off on a regular basis so i did you not you weren't necessarily watching movies i wasn't watching a lot of movies in 2001 plus you had 9 11 you know that happened in the back part so bill pullman yeah did i know you bill like pullman. fallout the what fallout the movie fallout did you like that one yes who was in fallout you're bringing up some stuff and you know me i'm a big movie guy i'm db i found fallout Anyway, what else? What else? Oh, you that's got? a game. Because there's a uh, there's not a... much. I just thought that was pretty cool, and I watched your video earlier about the eclipse thing. Yeah. And I found it very hard to try to wrap my brain. It was like, watch closely. <laughs> Are you paying attention? <laughs> yeah the uh, the eclipse thing. I'm getting I'm getting more and more pumped the more I hear about this thing, because I didn't realize that the yeah. United States has not had a major eclipse in literally a hundred years. So, really? Oh yeah, yeah. It's been ninety nine years since the United States had a big eclipse thing. Where I, where actually went across the United States, and the path is remarkable. I mean, it's literally going from the northwest corner down to the southeast corner, it, almost extreme. If it was any more, it'd be Seattle to Florida. But in this case, it's literally Oregon to South Carolina. It's 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 remarkable. The path. How is does taken. that work? Oh, don't get me started on it. You'll, we'll we'll talk about this later. <laughs> it, it's, it shouldn't work like that, in my opinion. There's been people that are making videos on it because it it shouldn't be going that in that direction. I don't think, and I uh, let's let's not get into it right now. But check it out when you get a chance. There's a whole bunch of people. I only made one video, and that was a mirror I made from somebody else. So yeah, I hey. thought it was. Yeah. Any um any shout outs you want to give before I kick you off into the night? No, shout out to, you know, as like I always do to my husband for waking me up and your videos, lots of people, cool. lots of people, everybody, right. everybody that's doing their work and putting videos on YouTube. I'm going to put my video on YouTube when I get data of my weird sunset reflection thing, Got but it. it won't be till probably the 5th All right. of July. All right. And I would like somebody to look at it and put it through some because I don't have that ability and if you get it and do that and redo it kudos <laughs> it's right hard on. to see in my video All right. <laughs> anyway All right. peace All right. All right. Hey, well, you have a good the one? convention is coming up yep we're getting there getting closer every day it's every day the older yeah. I get the faster it moves yep 
<laughs> Indeed. All right, you you have a good Love one. Love all you flat earthers. <laughs> Get out of here. All right, she's gone. Uh, let's pick up 626, who was trying to call in a whole bunch of times. 626 area code, are you there and where are you? 626. Pick up. You're on mute. Oh, boy, you better do something. Come on, 626, I can hear you. Yo, what's up, man? <laughs> All right, turn, da- turn down your thing in the background. Hey, what's up, boss? Oh, hold on a sec. That's all right. It's a rookie mistake, and you hate to see it. <laughs> there we go. All right, so you're in California. Yeah, well, hey, what's up, man? This is uh, the Uber driver. Right on. <laughs> right on. So what's up? What's new in the world of Uber driving? Uh, nothing much, except for... Uh, like I was telling you the other day that I've got to pick up the uh, shortstop for the Angels. That was pretty cool. I got to talk to him about the flatters for a little while. Cool. You want to talk He's about a pretty it a cool bit? guy. Yeah, of course. Uh, I uh, just had a pickup, and uh, when I went to go put his bags in the car, I noticed his Angels logo on his luggage and uh, happened to mention knowing that my dad signed with the angels at a high school back in the eighties and, uh, started talking about that for a little bit. And I was asking him if he's ever played at all still. And he's like, yeah, I played a little bit in college and a little bit of pro. And I asked him, well, what teams? And he told me the Braves and the angels. And I was like, I was like, well, when was the last time you played? And he goes, well, like yesterday. And I was like, wait, and I started thinking, of oh, your destination's the Angels Field. You got Angel stuff on your luggage. Last time you played was yesterday. I was like, dude, do you play for the Angels? And, like, he was actually kind of reluctant to actually tell me that he played. And when we got to the field and he passed his uh, air ID in front of me, the, the security guard, I looked down and uh, saw that his last name was Simmons. And then after I dropped him off at the player thing, I looked up who Simmons was on the Angels. And I was like, whoa. Uh, turned out to be the shortstop. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Um, and I got to talk to him about the flat earth for about, I don't know, seven, eight minutes or so. Nice. Uh, and he actually, uh, it was really cool because he didn't like, completely laugh at it or shut it down or anything he um we just talked about it he actually asked a couple questions uh try to come up with a couple answers to things especially as far as like the sun and the moon at the same time uh he kept he was thinking that well obviously something's over there and i'm like well it can't be because both things are on this side (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you can only see him on one side at a time. Uh, and, yeah, he was just really cool guy. Uh, extremely, extremely humble. Uh, and that was really awesome, especially dealing with someone who deals with the public all the time, you know? Like, they sure. get kind of jaded after a while. And and that was Ann Trouton uh, Simmons? Say what? Say that again? Is is his first name Ann Trelton? Or is there a different Simmons on that? On yeah. That and Trelton? No, that, yeah, that was him. Nice. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't even know that I was I had to look name. it up. Um, yeah. E- yeah, either did I. Um, <laughs> that's why, that's why when I saw his ID, I completely drew a blank on the first name because I had no clue even how to pronounce it. Uh, so I just remembered Simmons. <laughs> it was easier to look up. Right on. Uh, but yeah, that was really cool. And like, I got to thinking, uh, that it would actually make sense for the professionals to use Uber because it's kind of like anonymous, you know, like, uh, if they drive in in their car or like there was, there was a group of people like waiting by the gate when we pulled into like the player area. Uh, and like if they were in their car or something like that, 
and they would have to like deal with all that, you know, like people would start recognizing who they were when they pulled in and everything. Uh, I don't know, probably like you see in the movies and stuff where you get like a hundred, 200 people like pushing you as you're trying to walk through the gate or whatever. Oh yeah. Wanting autographs and stuff. Yeah. It, yeah. Dude, um, I'm so far out of baseball now, even though I played in college and I was working towards uh, being a pro when I was younger. Mm-hmm. Uh, just after getting sick and everything, just dealing with that and then finding scripture and then now dig that leading into the flat earth and everything. Like, I really don't watch baseball all that much, so I felt kind of bad not knowing who the guy was. Yeah. Uh but it is still cool meeting them. Um, right on, right on. But yeah, dude. Uh, besides that, I got uh, videos up now with uh, one of them's with an engineer that was working on the Ram Stadium uh-huh. that's being built in Inglewood. Uh, cool. I got one with a Riverside, um, a Riverside uh, Community College student. Uh, yeah, I got a couple of them up there. I got, I got all kinds of stuff that i'm going to be posting soon um right on some people that go ahead uh that actually um they tried to argue against it and discount it um i just i gotta find them in the hours of recordings that i have now sure so do do this for me plug plug your channel and where where the videos are and then we'll we'll go from there uh yeah, my channel is like I said last time. My channel is just my name. It's uh, Josh Walker. Uh, but if you want to find the videos, if you just type in Flat Earth and Uber, uh, they'll pop up. It's like the only thing that really pops up because uh, I don't think there's too many Uber drivers talking about this. <laughs> okay, Flat Earth Uber. That sounds great. And it's just I I really just from talking to a couple of people. Uh, that have heard the videos. I just hope that it actually gives somebody who listens to them a little bit of inspiration to just talk to the average person about this stuff. Like, don't be afraid. Like nobody's going to attack you. Nobody's going to bite you. I mean, the worst they do is get a little bit upset, but who cares? Like, yeah, you got an excellent uh, point there. Most, most people, they don't kill the messenger when it comes to this. Yeah. They may laugh at you, but we haven't had, as far as I know, we haven't had any flat earthers that have been put in the hospital because of this. Exactly. I mean, like, what's the, I mean, so they tell you some things and if it hurts your feelings for a little bit, who cares? You wake up tomorrow and you're still you. Right. It, you're fine. Uh, right. I just, it's really not that hard to talk to normal people about this. And I'm really starting to realize that the average person, even though, they do uh i i guess like shy away from it yeah. or you know like they don't uh they get a little uncomfortable mm-hmm. uh you can still have a conversation with them uh whether they agree or disagree it doesn't matter uh it's just it's the truth man uh yeah. it's I hear it's you. really it's really liberating when you know the truth, you know? Uh, but yeah, Hey, I'll get off the phone so you can get some more calls in. Dude. Okay, man. Uh, <laughs> hey, hey, thanks. I, I got a question. Um, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. it'd be awesome to hear, uh, a show where you have Rob Spahn and, uh, Sean McCurry. You know why? Because the couple of times I've heard you talk to Sean, I've heard him reference, like the Bible and stuff like that. And like he says, he doesn't push it, his beliefs on anybody. And that's awesome. Uh, but I would still like to hear what his beliefs are though. You know, like I would, I would find that interesting, especially like having him talk to someone like Rob, uh, and bounce some things off each other as far as like scripture with mixing in with the flat earth. I think that would be uh, kind of interesting. Right on. I will, I will, Seriously, consider that. That's not a bad idea at all, since I, I just reached out to Sean recently. Anyway, i got to pick up one more call before the break, so I'm going to send you off into the California evening. So uh, No problem, man. Have a good night. 
right, I'll, I'll keep listening and uh, I'll talk to you later, man. All right, we'll talk soon. Bye bye. Okay, let's pick up one more before we go to our final break, which this one's going to be 318. Got any glasses? There we go. 318 area code. You are on Live with Strange World right now. Hey, Mark. hey, where are you calling from, man? This is Peanuts from uh, the other LA, Louisiana. Louisiana, right on. What, uh, what's happening? Uh, nothing much, man. Um, I I just randomly checked uh, one of your videos uh, a couple of months ago. You had posted a video, mm-hmm. my eight year old son, you know, talking to his teacher. Oh, was that you? Uh, on, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I was that was that was fantastic. We we have already had that's already been turned into little uh, little music clips. It's it's it got around quite a bit. Yeah, it, it looks like it got around thirty thousand fast and then it yep. just kind of tipped off right there so. well it's it the thing is so many videos are created so quickly i mean flatter's videos even for big channels now have about a 10 day lifespan until they just kind of get put they just get you know pushed back because of all the new content that's coming in but i still but what's great is i you still use the sound clip in uh in a song that chip baker made a little musical thing and I use that in promos when I when I get a chance. Well, yeah. well uh, man, <clears throat> a lot of you know everybody's different, and that that's the beauty of a, of all of this. I know we all bring different. Uh huh. We all bring different different aspects, and uh, one thing that really I keep going back to is it seems like we live in a huge clock. Um, I know that may sound crazy to some no, people, but for me, really? it, it really? feels. It, <laughs> it, it feels like it's a it's a balanced out clock, yeah. And um, I, I'm I'm really looking forward to this eclipse, um, especially 33 days before and 33 okay. days after. Um, I I know that you know we're always monitored. And you know they're listening to us. They're listening yeah. to us right now. Sure. And um, one of my biggest fears is is they are going to completely fill the skies to where we won't be able to see the eclipse. Mm. I don't I don't know if they can and, pull that off in the, the entire United States. I mean, it's covering the western states, part of the path. It's going over nowheresville. I mean, there's huge huge tracts of land that don't even people don't even live there where this thing's going over. So you don't think that'll be a problem? I don't think it's going to be a problem. I mean, Oregon might be a stretch. Because it's Oregon, it's the Pacific Northwest. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet the farm on it, but it's going across. Uh, if you look at the path that's out there, I mean, you just type in uh, Eclipse 2017 path into Google, and it's there's no way you could block the entire thing. No way, and not in August. If it was in November or October or somewhere along those lines, oh yeah, yeah, you could do something there. But no, there's nothing. There's the the weather systems. There's only so much energy you can do because it's going. The thing is, it's going through the middle of the country, and even if you were going to generate a hurricane somewhere in the Gulf of Mexico, somewhere down there, once it gets over land, it's there's no energy left in it. There's nothing nothing for it to feed off of, because most of your major storms get their energy from the oceans, from the the heating and the cooling of the oceans. So nah, I wouldn't worry about it. In fact, you out in Louisiana, I think you're still in like the the high seventy or eighty percent range, which you know it's it's yeah. gonna darken. If you live in the United States, you're gonna see it no matter where you are. I mean, yeah, it's got okay. that path in the middle of it. You know, going from Oregon down to South Carolina, you could draw a line. But I mean, Los Angeles is gonna see it. New York's gonna see it. It's it, you can't unless you blanket the entire country in the end of August. <laughs> good luck. Uh, it's not not going to happen. So I think it's going to be a cool, cool thing. And, you know, also going through this, it seems like, you know, of course, whoever they are, the people in power, mm-hmm. there's, some, you know, something about eclipses and something about where we live is very, very important to them. And mm-hmm. it's not the type of Scientology that we're taught or whatever, something they know. And so... Um, I'm, you know, I'm that. That's really, really piqued my interest. You know? Oh yeah, 
Yeah, if are, you're we, gonna, are we supposed to be doing something? You know. Well, that's just it. I mean, if there's going to be some spooky ritual, that's going to be the day. And it's you know, it's exactly. not. It's, it starts starts at like ten in the morning over on the Oregon or on the Pacific coast, and then moves across you know fairly quickly. But it's going to be it's going to be fascinating. I'm uh, I'm I'm curious myself to see where this goes. But I hadn't really been paying that much attention until. Uh, I looked, in fact, you know what, let's do this, because you've only got about uh, 30 seconds before we go to break. Any any shout-outs you want to give before you head off? Just shout-out to everybody, and then um, all the flat edges, and then shout-out to, this is what I heard, shout-out to MC Hammer. I heard he believes the earth is flat. Right on! My man, <laughs> MC Hammer. That'd be great yeah. if he did. I, I'm, and of course, you know, he is too legit to quit. So why not? Right. Yeah, Thank you. I, 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 hey, no worries whatsoever. And you have a good rest of your night. Okay. You too. Okay. Bye bye. All right. Uh, we're going to pick up a call and send him in a break real quick before the music goes. Uh, 952 area code. You there? 952. All right. Stay there through the break. Okay. All right. No hate, no hype, no fear. You are listening to Truth Frequency Radio. We are TFR. Welcome back to Strange World, part four of four, your last chance to call in. We got two in the bullpen right now. And yes, that was Joe Jackson stepping out from his album, Night and Day. Okay, we got somebody, somebody, it's 952. 952, you are off mute. What's going on? Where are you from? Hey, hey, Mark, this is Wes, Flat Earth News Talk. Holy smokes. That's kind of that's- Showing, uh, yeah, oh my god, uh, why is it showing uh 952? I don't know, it says That's you're weird. calling from Twin Cities, Minnesota County Penitentiary. Yeah, that's what it is, straight from the penitentiary. So, yeah, you're calling from county, it's no. great. I think my <laughs> you're calling my me for bail, that. man. I'm not the guy you probably wanted to call, not the guy, uh, damn, no, it. probably not. Uh, I thought you were always. Uh, uh, never mind. Well, well, Holy unless world. unless you actually physically murdered Neil deGrasse Tyson, in which case I would fly out there in person. Wow, that's I the know, first right? time you said anything about the guy. I, I'm going to have to eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I mean the guy. The guy can only dodge this so many so many times. I appreciate that he's sitting in his house drinking fine wine on a regular basis that's his thing one of his hobbies is drinking expensive wine and he's got quite the palate for it but uh yeah being the face of science is not gonna not gonna help him in the long run anyway what's going on man but, but you know that science is always right whether you believe it or not yeah see and, you, so. and yeah exactly and that's the the comment that puts him in the crosshairs you know, you don't say yeah. that science is right whether you believe in it or not. You don't. Science has been wrong a whole bunch of the time. Science doesn't like apologizing for anything. You know, my little rant on that. Uh, I don't know. Look at little Wait. things like lead paint, lead gasoline, DDT, asbestos. Oh, I don't know. The scientists that got that took the bribes and, and told us cigarettes didn't cause cancer. Uh, I've got a whole bunch more that I could use. So don't tell me that science is infallible and science is incorruptible. Do I like light bulbs and microwave ovens and air conditioning? Yes, I do. But, you know, these are also the same guys that got paid to develop nerve gas and napalm and atomic weapons, whether you believe in them or not. Anyway, what else you got? Yeah, um, 
Yeah, I guess the only news that I've found in Flat Earth at the moment is just drama. You know, one Flat Earther gave some money to another Flat Earther, that Flat Earther brought it over to another Flat Earther, and that Flat Earther who received it turned around and said that he didn't receive it, and the cycle happened all over again, found out that he was scam. They were scamming them. Oh, so that's really the... I it's a dis- it's a dysfunctional family to be sure. Heck, I'll give you a great example. There's a channel out there. His name is Photos Photos. Photos Photos, you know, like photos twice. And he is not he's not even a troll. He is a he is a literal he's a flat earth guy. And this guy is a fan of, you know, Dell out in in Scotland. And he's a fan of Dells, right? Big believer in street activism. And he gives me grief. He comments on every single one of my videos and says that I am a horrible person and not a true flat earther because I don't take it to the streets and, and interview people and, 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 and confront them on the streets. That's, and I I try to explain, I'm like, dude, everybody's got their own thing. I I go, what? My videos don't count. The 120 plus interviews I've done don't count. None of the stuff I've done so far counts. I, you know, until I go on the street, you're, you're just going to keep giving me grief. And again, he's not even a troll. He's actually a full blown flat earth believer, but his, his thing is flat earth activism. So yeah, uh, there are the, the, it is, I think my analogy is spot on. And that is the flat earth community is like the Scottish Highland clans, the clans of the Highlands where the, you know, where they're all waving different banners but at the same time, we've got a common enemy, but they still fight amongst themselves. And that's going to happen yeah. until science makes some sort of organized uh, attack against us, which is uh, hopefully coming one of these days. If mainstream ever gets their act together, the science will have to address it. And I hope it's not just Bill Nye. I hope it's other guys. I hope Brian Cox gets involved. I hope NDT gets involved. So anyway. Yeah. Um, what is Peter Growley's show? I know he's saying something. Uh, Peanut Gallery says, let's see here. <laughs> he wanted me to sing Joe Jackson, of course. And then he says, science is oh, he, all, all, always Jackson wrong. It, I'm sorry, what? I said, uh, you know, I uh, now I hate that I even uh, went ahead and got the guy on my Skype. He keeps texting me. Anyhow, <laughs> he just texted me earlier saying, hey, I got a good one for you. Well, all right, here's your moment. Shine. <laughs> Here it is. Um, his quote is, the securest place is a prison cell, but there is no liberty. And who said that? Benjamin Franklin. Uh, no. Had and to then, go with that prison cell. Yeah, and then the second one is, science is always wrong. It never solves a problem without creating ten more. And that's from George Bernard Shaw. That's two quotes for Wes, he says. And he says the greatest movie ever was Highlander. So, there you go. Oh, God, yes. Highlander. I see. I don't, I don't, I, it, it was the villain that made that movie. I, I loved him. Yeah. He's, he's been a character actor for years and years and years. And I loved him in that. Uh, I thought I, I enjoyed him way more than I enjoyed the, uh, you know, the straight up Highlander himself. And Sean Connery, of course. People keep forgetting you know, that Sean Connery was a major player in that movie. And remember that's at the rock. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I will let you go. I just wanted to say hi to you. And, hey, man. Uh, kind of beat peanut, peanut gallery up a little. Oh, no worries. <laughs> and uh, if you um, need uh, any funds transferred to your canteen account there at County, let me know, and I'll uh, I'll get you some cigarettes, okay? There you go. There you go. All right, All right, Mark. Take care. All right. Have a good one. All right. Let's see who else we can pick up. Let's let's do rapid fire. Here we go. Uh, I'm gonna pick up eight four five, and then I'm gonna try to go after nine one zero. So first one first eight four five area code. Uh, this has got to be New York. Hey Mark, it's Mark. North Carolina. Hey, Carolina. And North Carolina. Wait, oh you guys got both of them? Wait. Yes. So, yes. Candy. Do, do you want me to do you want me to add her in? <laughs> no, she's right. on my line. Well, oh, she's she's just on your line with you. Okay, good. Because if I add her in now, the the thing yeah. will. So yeah. what's uh, what's going on, you two? Not much. We just wanted to bother you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, say hello. Thanks. You know, harass you a little bit. <laughs> Peanut Gallery says, "God help us it's at the crazy, same time." 
<laughs> nice, nice. That's awesome. Very so, nice. uh, are you are you guys excited about the eclipse? Can, Candy's going to be fairly yeah. close to it. Oh, yeah. She's going. She's going to be almost right. It's yeah, going to be so almost I'm right on. Me. Sorry, what what was that, Candy? I have plans for me to put some more down in care and uh, um. Well, we haven't actually made it different plans, but we talked about it. Um, maybe about you know, somewhere around the Morgal because you know he lives right there in Spartanburg, which is very close to Greenville, which is where to- like complete totality will be. So yeah, um, the the totality path is amazing out there. Yeah, so you're you're yeah, it's gonna yeah. go it's gonna go right on top of you because it ends in the in South Carolina, so you'll. You'll be definitely in there in the ninety something percentile range, or real close to yeah. one hundred. We're going no, no, we're going to Greenville, North Carolina, South Carolina, which is one hundred percent. Right on. But even New right. York, even and New I York, be able to see it from New York, right? He's going to be able to see it. In fact, if I pull up my map real quick, yeah. hang on one second, because you can look up the percentages. I put the percentages in that video I released today at the very end for for people to kind of look at it. And the percentages are even New York is going to be at on the 80 percent range. Chicago is going to be in the 90 percent range. I mean, literally, if you really? are in. The, oh, yeah, it's a it's a wide path. Literally, if you're in the United States, you're going to feel it like Denver is in the 90 percent range. Uh, Seattle is in the 90 percent range. Los Angeles is in the 75 percent range. And that's in the, you know, the lower southeast. I'm sorry, southwest corner. And Boston is in the 70, 70% range. But, so that gives you an idea of, of how far this thing is. Even like Miami is going to yeah. be in the 80% range. So it's everyone will see it. Wow. Literally the entire country will see this. You cannot miss it. You are, there is no way to avoid it. So if you're thinking that you can get out of Dodge, and if you think the, the, the eclipse is going to use some sort of bad energy, good luck. You're not getting out of it. So the question is, will it affect uh, if, yeah, so if you want to, if you want to commit some strike against the United States, that'd be it right then, right then and there. So, but yeah. I, it was weird. You see all these I, little, I don't t- think it's so negative. I don't think it's negative, but it's weird. They're, they're yeah, gouging, it's gonna be they're price gouging all these little towns all along the path. Oh, the hotels. Oh yeah. Gotcha. So if you're in uh, where is that? Wyoming or South Dakota? No, Wyoming. There's these little towns. They're like they're charging amazing amounts already for for anyone that stops in there. Even though we're talking about a very you know you can't guarantee anything Crazy. because of the weather. So uh, it's gonna be fun. Yeah. Even my wife wants to drive down and see it. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have, have a quote for you. I wouldn't have to drive. Oh yeah, we got. I got. Oh, you don't have to drive. It's going to cross over you. Well, it's going. It's going to be pretty close. It's going to be pretty close. I mean, I'll be in Seattle. It's going to be. I mean, literally, I could drive to the hundred percent marker in about three hours. Oh, cool. That's not bad at all. Not bad at all. Oh yeah, I got a quote. Um, Three things cannot be long hidden: the sun, the moon, and the truth. That is about Buddha. That's awesome. I just put that on a slide for um, um, Dan Duckenbeck. Butter subgenius. I put together a PowerPoint for him for our presentation. Yeah. And that was on the quote. And, uh, Mark, I wanted to tell you. Go ahead. Okay. No, go ahead. From um, August 5th. Is it August 5th and 6th? Or uh, the Zen Garcia thing? Yeah. August 5th Whatever time you're going to be in, in yeah, Atlanta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going. You're not going to go? I'm not going because, um, no, there's a flat earth meetup in Charlotte. So me and Karen are going to go to that. All right. Well, yeah, of course you want to go to that because, heck, D Marble's going to be there. <laughs> so that's you that's drive gonna... to it after the seminar. Uh, n- no, I'm, 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 not, I'm not staying mm-hmm. long. I am. I am flying in fairly early, but I am out of there. In fact, I'm leaving that Sunday, so I won't even be there for the entire seminar. But I, I think I do get to sleep in a little bit on that Sunday. I asked that when Dean Marble was on the line. I said, where are they talking about? Atlanta? So he's coming to the Atlanta thing? 
No, no, he's going to Charlotte. Oh. Yeah, I heard him say Charlotte. Okay, yeah, yeah. I didn't hear that part. I was, my yeah. computer was frozen, so hey. I missed it. And I said in the chat, where are we talking about? Yeah, it's yeah. Right it's, you, Candy? It's, it's Charlotte. That hey, is I, me. That's where I live. That's hey, what I'm saying. I, <laughs> guys, shut up for Sorry. a second. The um, I've got a quote for uh, for both of you, both from the peanut gallery. This one's for you, Mark. Uh, a fact is a simple statement that everyone believes. It is innocent unless found guilty. A hypothesis is a novel suggestion that no one wants to believe. It is guilty until found effective. That's from Edward Teller. <laughs> and the one uh. for the one for Candy is there is no gravity. The Earth sucks. <laughs> By unknown. <laughs> Uh, I like it. <laughs> oh, man. me in the peanut gallery. Ooh. Oh, man. It's, it's a big stuff. Anyway, uh, you guys got anything? But so, okay, so yes, D Marble is going to be at the Charlotte event on August fifth and sixth. I'm going to be at the Atlanta event. But mine thing, remember, mine thing isn't a meetup. It is a debate between uh, people that are down there. So it's it's a formal event at a hotel. And so yeah, if anyone wants to go down there, great. I don't. I'm going to be kind of in and out. You might want to, you know, go and and stay for the excitement because not many people get to see uh, an actual debate between people. Although it is going to be biblically based, and mm-hmm. not saying that you should bring your King James with you or no chapter and verse, but mm-hmm. you is can't. It, is Atlanta close to the Ben Garfield area? Is close to what? Is that where Ben Garfield is in Atlanta? I don't know if if he's in the Atlanta area. He might be. I, I, do, I don't know. I should probably look that up. But either way, I'm going to be talking to him. I wonder. Maybe, yeah. Say it again. Why isn't he on the conference list? How come he's not a presenter there? Uh, there's lots of people. Lots of people that aren't on the conference list. But it's but it's been changing recently. I mean, you yeah. saw that DITRH is going to be there and a pastor. I think we asked him. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm pretty so sure. Happy. Remember, I'm not part of the the asking committee, the request committee, so I don't know why it wasn't asked. I the asking committee. <laughs> Whatever. And by that, I mean it's more of an um, oligarchy. Anyway, right. Right. So. I'm sorry. They, they was added to the um list. I was like, no, yes. I was wondering why he wasn't on there in the first place too. Well, they only they only had room for so many people, and then Amy Denise. I was saying, I mean, you guys, yeah, we I we we're, you guys we're starting at seven in the morning. Yeah, we're packed. We're packing them in pretty early. So, uh, but I'm glad DIT is there. Is there? I don't know much about D- Pastor Dean Odell, but that's groovy. And if there's any other changes along the way, you know, we still got three months. Is, is he the gentleman that's called you a few times or no? No, that's a different guy. Different guy. No, a oh, different pastor. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Pe- Peanut Gallery wants me to hang up on you guys so I can take at least one more call before I call it quits for the night. Yep, absolutely. Gotcha. Shout out so, to everybody that called. Oh, love everybody. And you know, just try to stay honest and to yourself and everyone else. Right on. And thanks, yeah, Mark. Very welcome, and uh, you guys have a great, great rest of your night, okay? Cool. All right. All right. All right. I'm going to hang out if anybody wants to come around. Okay. See you later. See you guys. Bye, Candy. We'll talk later. Okay. Uh, I don't know if this other call is actually holding, but let's pick them up and see what happens, shall we? 910, who is this? Steve from St. Augustine, Florida. Hey, what's going on, man? Sorry you were on hold for so long. But I, I didn't no know. No worries, no worries. What's, uh, what's going on down in Florida? Uh, not much. Uh, I'm going to call. I got two things to tell you. One thing is my girlfriend's from Seattle. Yeah. And we've been wanting to move there. How do you afford to live in Seattle? It's so expensive. I love it up there. We visit a lot. Well, you don't li- you don't live in Seattle uh, ever since it got really bad when Microsoft started branching out and in, in and Nintendo, and then once Google mm-hmm. put up once Google and I'm sorry Google and Amazon I think both both put major offices up there, 
it was yeah. yeah it got crazy 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 no no i don't even i don't even live in seattle i live up on an island north of seattle so oh, it's yeah. it's tough you yeah. yeah you don't you cannot live in the in the corridor the main interstate five corridor it's a it's a zoo you wouldn't want to anyway though the the traffic is horrendous because there's only so much room to expand freeways and and they've already hit it capacity so seattle bellevue uh you kind of want to be out of the way depending on what you want to do but the other thing i want to mention is if you're thinking about moving to seattle make sure you spend at least a week here in the fall don't come up in july and say oh it's beautiful it's the most wonderful place and then think it's going to be all peaches and gravy i don't know if that's the saying but who doesn't matter because the the real test remember there's 220 overcast days a year and if you're from florida i don't know what that would do for you i mean yeah it's only like 57 well, degrees but anyway go on originally i'm from buffalo and she's from seattle and we met here in florida about oh, okay two or three years ago okay then but you I both loved it on the west coast yeah i loved it up there it's beautiful but yeah anyways we're traveling up uh south carolina for the but Oh, cool. Heat, talked it up to that to uh, you before. She's the one uh, psychology. She's studying psychology right now in college. Oh, cool. But um, she hates Great. flat earth. So, than that. But anyway, another thing is uh, why does Eric Dubé like? I seen him make videos like hating on you and Patricia <laughs> and other flat earthers. Uh, okay. Well, we got a little time. I'll, I'll give you the quick Reader's Digest breakdown of Eric. Eric and I actually weren't on bad terms when this whole thing started back in the beginning of 2015. And we hadn't formally gotten, you know, nobody was really talking to each other yet. Matt had called me and Matt had contacted Eric. But then I did a couple interviews where I was mentioning, because I was using every resource I could, and I was mentioning two things. One was uh, uh, Crow 777 and his, uh, the, the lunar wave type thing that he was doing. And the other thing was that I was uh, talking about the Orlando Ferguson map and 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 how things uh, weren't i didn't think you know the, the the flatness was you know people really weren't doing the curvature of the earth much because none of my clues talked about the curvature of the earth and one of his guys wrote me and said eric's really upset with you eric never eric to this day has never sent me an email never sent me a text never left me a voicemail never i mean not once and, but one of his guys said he's really upset with you and i go why he goes well you're not supposed to be talking about crow triple seven and I said, why not? And he goes, well, because Crow doesn't believe in flat earth. Well, of course, he didn't then. I think he's kind of flipped now. But I, I go, so what? He goes, well, you, you can't use that. I'm going, okay, well, I don't need permission to use any resource resources at my disposal. If Crow 777 has the best moon footage that I've ever seen, that's what I'm going to use. I don't care if he's a flat earther or not. And immediately he just went on the offensive. And I've never... <clears throat> to this day, I've never led an attack against him. I've never made a video against him or anything like that. But I made his enemies list. I was number one with a bullet on the, on the top of his enemies list that he made in 2015. And he's never, he, I don't know what it is. He just will not back down. Uh, but again, that wouldn't, it's, and it's not just me. He doesn't, he doesn't endorse anybody in the flat earth movement. Uh, you think I'm kidding? Oh, no, no. Go, I've, seen, I've seen him do like I hate videos against you a while back. And then a week or two ago, I seen on a related shirt search on YouTube, it had a, a, a two new, like expose the flat earthers, YouTube accounts. So I'm looking at them and they're showing Eric's videos and then they got new ones. And it's going on like the whole crew. Yeah. Of, like the big YouTube channel. Yeah. Yeah. I, again, Eric make, makes some great work. I mean, look, look he's, he's generated a lot of content. My only beef with him, I said, look, if you're, you're going to do this, you might want to back off attacking any specific demographic group. And he did the opposite. He just is like, all right, fine. You don't completely get the whole message, but that's 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 fine. You want to do it, whatever uh, you're you know, you're going to run into a brick wall eventually. So eh, I, I don't really worry about it much anymore. Because the this thing is is beyond Eric and me and Matt and and Jaren. I mean, this thing's got a life of its own now. So uh, I'm again. I I put the statement in the middle of my thing where I say, uh, in the middle of my description, I say, look, we uh, 
I'm humbled just to be a part of it. So anyway, um, I, well, yeah. what's, um, well, I was just checking if there was a story behind it or that was, that's basically that's the, I got to. that's basically the story. He, he just doesn't want to endorse anybody. And he proved that during his Eddie Bravo interview where he, Eddie Bravo asked him one, he asked him, who do you hate? And Eric wouldn't do it because he was worried about copyright stuff. And they says, well, who do you endorse? And he just stayed quiet. He, he wouldn't endorse anybody. It's like, man, come on. you got to have somebody you endorse out there. And he just wouldn't do it. Anyway, I hate to do this to you, but unfortunately, I've got to make announcements before I shut the show down. Any shout outs you want to want to give before you head off? Uh, shout out to D Marble. He chats with me online sometimes. Fire cats with dread. And you and everybody cool. in the Flat Earth community, even though everybody shills, supposedly. <laughs> That's sarcastic. Yeah. I know. I know. Um, cool. No, I appreciate your time. Thank you, Mark. Hey, you have a good night, okay? Thank you, you too. Okay, bye-bye. All right, guys. Uh, tomorrow, I'm actually going to be doing Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes with Patricia Steer. That starts at 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Just check out her channel, otherwise known as Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. Her name is, of course, Patricia Steer. The website is enclosedworld.com. Check it out. We're in the middle of a revamp right now. But I think everyone's everything's still up and running there. If you get a chance, uh, if you are subscribed to MarkSargent.com, you probably should kill that subscription anytime soon, because the the producer, the web producer that was involved in that, is not returning my calls anymore. So, uh, and yes, Peanut Gallery says we should take bets on the a hot potato start time. You never know. I mean, she got one. She started one show on time out of 170. I think, and that was mostly because there was a film crew there and she had to get uh, everything ready early. But you know what? She's fashionably late because she's so fashionable. That's that's the only reason I deal with it. <laughs> it's because, like, look, she's her. I, I, I can't argue with the results. She always gets the show done and she she powers through all the... Uh, all the the fun technical problems and she's great uh, i i wouldn't i couldn't ask for a better uh, co-host for that show and it's her show so what am i supposed to do i'm not gonna not not gonna not do it um with that we'll we will um thank you i just want to say thank you for everybody that sent in emails i will probably do an email show if not tomorrow i'll do it on thursday i'm trying to get caught up i promise uh thank you to the peanut gallery for his help and, of course, the quick announcements. Remember, I'm going to be in Atlanta for the global versus flat earth .com debate between Zen Garcia and Dr. Stephen Pigeon. Rob Skiba's got his thing coming up on September 15th, 17th on TakeOnTheWorld17.com. And, of course, the big event, the Raleigh, North Carolina Flat Earth International Conference. And if you guys don't know what's going on there, just go to FE2017.com and have a lot of fun. And until then, well, come back next time. Same flat time, same flat channel. See you guys. Evie, what is this? What is this? Is that a model of the flat geocentric Earth? <laughs> nice. I had to make a new one. What are you doing? <laughs>